Welcome to our very first uh, lecture on Java. As we start, we are looking at the features of uh, Java language. <clears throat> so Java is one of those highly used languages in the industry today. Uh, if you do a Google search, you will realize that generally it will appear among the top five. So the question that now remains is why is it uh, uh, loved? among the industry professionals or companies even today. So we're going to look at the following points and we will treat each one of them separately. So Java is simple. Java is simple because uh, when you are coding in a Java language, a lot of things have been removed that, used, that a developer used to need to, to do himself. Like in the early 90s when Java was developed, uh, you find that C++ and C was one of the highly or uh, common language of choice. So in Java, you don't have pointers. If you coded in C++, you had to write code to deal with pointers, memory addresses, which was quite uh, a bit complex per se. Also, you needed to write code to manage memory. You delete objects after you have used that object and all that. But in Java, that has been removed away from a developer. <clears throat> Again, platform <clears throat> independence. This one is the most important feature of the Java language. The difference between the way Java and other programming languages Wax was very revolutionary. You see, code in other languages is first translated by a computer into instructions for a specific type of a computer. The Java compiler instead turns code into something called <coughs> bytecode, which is then interpreted by the Java runtime environment or other virtual machine. Now, this JRE acts as a virtual computer that interprets the bytecode and translates it for the host computer or for the environment in which it is running on. Because of this, Java code can be written the same way for many platforms. Written, uh, uh, it, is, it is even termed write once, run anywhere. This made Java to be so popular. The program compiled from one machine can be executed on any machine with Java without the need for recompilation to that specific uh, f platform. As you can see here on the diagram, we see that this Java code.java, uh, which is now compiled by the Java compiler into bytecode.class file. Now this <coughs> bytecode, you can run it on any platform, Mac, Linux, Windows, regardless of which platform created it. It's agnostic of the, of the environment. Then OOP design. <coughs> so Java is OOP oriented and OOP comes with a whole lot of benefits that we will look in our upcoming uh, videos. For now, we can know that inheritance under OOP has to do predominantly with uh, the reuse of code. Uh, you don't need to repeat things. You avoid duplication. If, uh, you, uh, if you have code in a super class, you can reuse it in the subclass. Abstraction has to do with only exposing necessary details and hiding the implementation details. Encapsulation, some people they say hiding of data, some they will tell you it's about uh, grouping data and its appropriate method in one place. Then polymorphism, many forms. Then an object can manifest many forms at, at runtime. So Java also supports uh, that as well. Then Java is robust, automatic memory management. This is achieved through 
uh, garbage collection. So Java has a garbage collector in the runtime that will take objects that have gone out of scope, that are no longer reachable. It will take them out of memory. Memory, I mean in the, in the heap. It will take those objects out. Exception handling is also something that is uh, uh, catered for very nicely in the Java environment. Then Java is also architecture neutral, which means the implementation of its features are not dependent on the architecture. For example, the size of a primitive type is fixed regardless of whether it's on a 32-bit or 64-bit system. Security. We already mentioned with uh, OOP that you can declare properties, give them access modifiers, give them scope the way you want. Then we also mentioned that with Java, pointers are removed because pointers have got their own problems. They can create memory leaks in your application that can be exploited. Then we have a sandbox for security. The Java runtime acts as a sandbox, which makes it hard for Java code to harm a computer that it's running on. Then we also have a security manager as well, which actually helps to manage system resources in a controlled manner. Then, most importantly, we have a bytecode verifier. This ensures that code uh, passed to the Java interpreter is in a fit state to be executed and can run without the, the fear of breaking the Java interpreter. And any code that has been imported through class loading will not be allowed to execute until it has passed the verifier's test. Multithreading. Java also allows you to write an application that can enable you to uh, do many things at once, like simultaneously. And with the arrival of multi-core processors, Java, beginning from Java 8, has also made room for that, especially with uh, Java streams. You can have a situation where your stream, if it has a lot of data that it's processing, it can make use of uh, cores, different cores, to process that data, which now make it uh, allows you to make maximum use of the computer resources, thereby you have increased performance. High performance in the Java execution engine runtime. We have what we call JIT compiler, which is a component uh, of a runtime environment that improves the performance of a Java application by compiling bytecode to native machine code at runtime.